Dr. McGabel welcomes you again to transformation of multiple random variables. So the title says transformation of multiple random variables. We have seen transformation of a single random variable where we have x here to go through a transformation and we get y. Given the PDF and the transformation, our job was to find the PDF of y. But now we have transformation of multiples of random variables. We could have one at the output or we could have y1, y2, y3. We're dealing with multiples of them. We could go through some complicated math in this lecture. However, the conclusion would be relatively simple. The math would look complicated because of the generalization. However, the idea would remain the same as the single variable transformation. So we have two scenarios. The first one is single function transformation, which means the output would be just one function, y. We can also think of y uh, multiple functions. We get y1 at the output, y2, y3, and uh, what have you. So we can get here y1, y2, and so on. But we'll start with the single function transformation. The general, um, the general form for the output y is a function that operates on x. So we have y equal to g function of x1, x2 up to xn. If you think about the CDF, the CDF, the output as function of the input, the CDF, we start with the CDF because it's related to the probability. The probability that y is less than or equal to a given quantity. If y is less than a given quantity, this should correspond to a certain region on x that will result on this y. So we need to know what is this region. What are the points in the hyperspace that represent the wanted region? What values of x result in y less than a given, a given value? Once we know this region, we can integrate the joint PDF over all variables. What are the limits? The limits are the value that satisfies the condition that makes y less than or equal to a given value. So these limits maybe is the key to the successful implementation of the equation. Once you get the CDF, you can differentiate with respect to y and get uh, the PDF. We can think of the key to solving this problem is identifying the area. Problems could be very complicated, but we'll look at some certain examples and we should be able to understand them. So let's see. The first example that we'd like to consider is the transformation of multiple random variables where y and x are related by the following equation. So y equals to x1 divided by x2. We, know, we need the ratio between the two. We have a signal and a noise and we'd like to get the ratio between the two, for example. x1 and x2 are two positive. So we only consider the positive random variables. Otherwise, will have trouble. So x1 is positive, x2 is positive, and we want to find the region where x1 and x2 are um, positive, and we want to know what's the PDF of the ratio, given the PDF of x1 and x2. So for, for capital Y to be less than a given quantity, the ratio x1, the green over the blue should also be in that region. So what is the region that we need to find? Remember that x1 over x2 it's always positive quantity as given in the question, so it's greater than zero. And we want to consider the condition where this is less than y. If we draw the relation between x and y and x2, where these axes are x1 and this is x2, okay, we will find that y is a straight line. y is represented by this line. So if you want to find the CDF where y is less than a given value, you need to consider all this region. Because in this region, we satisfy the condition. Okay, so if you want to specify this region, then we have to specify the limit of x1 and x2. If we allow x2 to take all, positive, all possible values here, then you need to limit x1 in this region, which means the integration limit for x2 would, would be from 0 to infinity. However, the integration limits for x1 would be from 0 to this line. What is this line in terms of x2? In terms of x1, it's equal to y x2. And this is why the integration limit is from 0 to y x2. 
finding the region, defining the region, and finding the integration limit is the key to solving these problems. Now, because of the relation between y x uh, x1 and x2, we can write x1 equal to y here, uh, equal to y x2. And then from that, we can find the differential dx1 equal to x2 dy. So if you want to represent the CDF in terms of PDF now, we need to take the derivative with respect to y. Okay, it's like finding the derivative with respect to, to x1, but there's a scaling of x2. So I can remove this here. Okay, this is equivalent to x2 dy. Now if you differentiate both sides with respect to y, you get the PDF here, and then the internal, the, the integral will disappear Okay, and we are going to uh, have x2 here as the output. All right. So this is uh, we are differentiating with respect to uh, with respect to y. Okay, now uh, if you want to continue with the solution, the problem become, becomes a mathematical problem, and then we can use uh, Leibniz rule, where it it, it allows you to find the integration given that the integration limits are also a function of the variables. We're not going to go there, we'll just show you the idea because some of these problems could prove to be very long. I just want to give you the basic principle. Now we can also think of another example, x2, where y is related to x1 and x2 by the following relation. Okay, so once again the idea is to find the limit. So starting with the joint PDF, how do we represent this region which is inside the circle? Because y is equal to x1 plus x2 all squared under the root is like an equation or equation of a circle. Okay, we take the positive side if if, if you will. Now, uh, if you are representing the following, uh, if you want to represent y, it's an equation of of uh, of a circle, and to represent the circle. The limits for, we can take one limit for y, okay, it takes from minus y to plus y, or from minus the radius to positive radius, okay, for, for the other quantity, it's going to be uh, represented, you have to be within the region, okay, so you can take any value here for x2, from here to here, but uh, for the case of y1 you have to make sure that x1 you have to make sure that you don't go outside and these equations are the positive and, and negative roots so this is the upper limit and this is the lower limit okay so these are the values once you execute the integration you can get the answer once more we will need to use um, Lebanese equation to find the answer and um, to solve this integral inside we use uh, we need to do some extended math which is maybe beyond the scope of what I want to explain here but it's just going to be a, a substitution of of whatever um, formula is given so we can get the PDF of y for the case of um, if you want to extend uh, to apply the equation you'll find that these two terms are going to be zero because we are integrating uh, if you substitute for the limit for i the inner the blue part of the signal you'll find that you are going to give it from y to y, these are limits are going to be the same, so you get you get zero. And the final answer should be uh, the answer should be related to uh, the following expression. Once again, we want just to get to the uh, to the stage where we where we set up the integral correctly. Now solving the integral, we can share our math uh, problems with um, either from our mathematical background or we can get help into solving these problems. For just to continue with the same example, uh, the PDF for the case of the sum of the square roots will be given by the following uh, after the substitution. And we can also try this for the case of Gaussian. So please, as a homework assignment, as an offline assignment, apply the above results for the joint Gaussian. Just substitute here all the quantities uh, and tell me what is f of y. Assume zero variance, zero mean, and same variance for x1 and x2, and assume that they are independent or uh, uncorrelated. So let's see how much you get, and please share your answer in the slides. 
All you need to do is to substitute these things back here with the proper values and limits. Now we're done. We're done with the example of single transformation of multiple random variables. And we, we found that it's about finding the limit. We can extend this just for the sake of generalization for multiple transformation. You get y1, y2 up to yn. So we can write mathematically as y sub i to represent the ith, the ith output, the ith output, which is a transformation of the input variables. We have different transformation for different outputs. If you make, of course, capital N equal to 1, you go back to the single variable transformation. Now, of course, when you are dealing with, with um, multiple transformation, you might need partial differentiations because you are not dealing with only one variable. You can also write x in terms of uh, the output. Sorry. You can also write x in terms of the output by using the inverse transformation. So the all problem boils down again to finding what is the region at the output that is corresponding to the region at the input to find the probability. And this mapping could prove to be uh, not straightforward. We can do like we did uh, before. We can define the Jacobian as uh, the determinant of the function that has the partial differentiation with respect to all, to the, to the all variables. If you have linear transformation, that would be relatively simple. We can write the output PDF as the input PDF, like we did, multiplied by the, uh, the absolute value of the Jacobian. This is very similar to what we had to the single random variable transformation where we have dx by dy here, but this is kind of extension. So don't worry about the details of, of the formulas, the, the exact write-up. You just need to understand the concept that what we have done for single random variable could be extended for multiple random variables. We'll do an example where we look at the Jacobians of of different uh, scenarios. So example three, multiple variable transformation. Let the transformation be linear and given by the following. Okay, um, now to build the Jacobian, we can write, I'm using colors here just to distinguish, we have green and purple, and we can write x in terms of uh, y1 and y2. So this is just solving for x1 and x2. Uh, this is what we need, in fact, in fact, to find the Jacobian. So to find the Jacobian, it's we need the inverse transformation. This is why I solved for x1 and x2. Now, if you take the partial derivative, it's just the coefficient. So the first element here is this here. The second element here is nothing but, again, this is this is just a constant add output. So we can find all the entries from here that correspond to the Jacobian, and then, then find the determinant. Sorry, find the determinant by multiplication. You multiply this by this, minus this, multiplied by that, one over, and we got the answer. So this is the, the Jacobian, and if you need to get the absolute value for that, and multiply by the joint PDF, you get the output PDF. If we have used specific numbers, this would might look simpler. But remember that for this to be valid, the denominator should not equal to zero. When we come to the Gaussian random variable transformation, we'll get a linear, we'll get an example with numbers. So see you then. Thank you for your patience and we'll see you in coming videos.